I never knew it was going to take a 70 years old, a farmer from the UK to shake up the boxing world and stick his foot up in old media ass. Excuse my language. But the man named Iskare Foot for a reason. And from the outside looking in, he's going to be here for a long season. So Care Foot, as he's applying pressure on old media and exposed Tyson Fury for bribing him in order to lie in court, which is a criminal act. Finally, an old media member responded, which is Teddy Atlas. Now, Teddy Atlas, he's 50-50. What I mean by that, sometimes he will tell the truth, maybe not all the way, but at least 70%. However, sometimes he will try to cover up for these fighters on the hope list. So that's what I mean by him being 50-50. He will play devil advocate, but then on the other hand, he will try to hide the truth doing so. And then sometimes every blue moon he will come out speaking the truth. So that's why I say it's 50-50, which I know why, because he works with ESPN. And of course, he got personal bias. So ain't nothing wrong with that. But when you let your emotion talk over your logic, then there is a problem. And of course, one of the main factors, he worked with ESPN. So he's limited on what he could say. So I'm an understanding person. That's why I give Teddy Atlas the benefit of the doubt some of the times. Sometimes he's reaching extremely like he was for the glove gate situation, which I dropped a video on that. I'm going to leave the link in the comment section below. So make sure y'all check it out. But then for the steroids allegations, he somewhat told the truth. He basically called out Tyson Fury for being a cheater the nice way. He didn't keep the same energy he kept with Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. And he also deflected using Pacquiao to get away. What I mean by that, Pacquiao already served his time. It's like a criminal when he get locked up for a couple years. And then another criminal is on a trial. And then you bring up the old criminal story, which that's completely not fair. I understand if you're trying to bring awareness but can the new criminal get the same work the old criminal got? Why you have to deflect, which I'm going to dive deeper on that. So I wasn't even going to touch on what Teddy Atlas had to say, because at the time I wasn't informed and he has his own platform and I have mine. However, a lot of my keys, a.k.a. my brothers, this is the Boxing Brotherhood for the people that didn't know. So subscribe below if you want to be part of the family. Aki stand for my brother in Arabic. And if you know, you know. My Aki's already know what time it is. So a lot of my Aki's requested me to talk about Teddy Atlas, Glove Gate controversy, which I already did. And also the contaminated meat wild boar excuse, which that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, first things first. Unlike the glove controversy, as far as Tyson Fury filling a drug test back in 2015, that's a fact. So ain't no denying that. And Teddy Atlas basically co-signed that by stating, oh, they really blamed it on the wild boar? How creative. Because when Tyson Fury failed a drug test back in 2015 and his test came out positive for steroids, in order to beat the case, he used this farmer wild boar excuse in order to beat it. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, it actually worked. Even though this wild boar is nearly extinct from existing. And why is it conjected with steroids? Why is it contaminated meat? However, we're not going to dive into the unknown. Let's just face reality and what's in front of us and what's being said by Teddy Alice. So Teddy did not deny the fact that Tyson Fury cheated in the past. That's one thing. He just laughed at the excuse by Tyson Fury. However, what he said is, this is not the reason why Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder, which that's a duh, because that took place in 2015 and we in 2020 now. So I don't know where that's coming from. No one made that claim, not Deontay Wilder, nor his fans, 
The reason the Yukata case that took place in 2015 with Tyson Fury got brought up is because and thanks to the 70 years old farmer Carefoot that Tyson Fury team member allegedly bribed him for 25000 in order to lie in court to cover up for Tyson Fury. That's why Yukata is reopening the case. It's not because Deontay Wilder fans are complaining, etc., etc., because they haven't even talked about the glove situation. At least old media. But they want to talk about an issue five years ago. The reason why they talking about it, though, is because Carefoot. Not because Wilder, not because of Wilder fans, or none of the above. It's because of Carefoot. And because of Carefoot name being on the court papers, Yukata is reopening the case as they have lost 600,000 going back and forth with Tyson Fury. And since Tyson Fury is facing an eight year ban, if all of a sudden Tyson Fury win, then the hope insurance kicked in yet again. The complexion for the protection is undefeated. So with that being stated, we're not going to talk about the unknown. We're going to talk about the known because the boxing commission is very corrupted. Ask Dylan Yu White. Ask Eddie Hearn, right? With their situation with Yukata. So if Tyson Fury beat the case, you already know someone got paid off. Furthermore, Teddy Atlas basically informed the fans that Tyson Fury did not cheat against Wilder. I'm not talking about the glove gate situation because I already debunked what Teddy Atlas had to say when it comes to that. However, I'm talking about the steroids allegations. But we truly don't know. What I mean by that, the WBC recently increased the computer role limit a fighter could have in his system because so many fighters from Mexico, aka Canelo Alvarez and all these other fighters that failed the VADA testing due to contaminated meat or at least that excuse so what ended up happening the wbc ended up increasing the computer role limit a fighter could have in his system so we truly don't know if tyson fury was on contaminated meat or not even though the vada testing for both wilder and fury came out negative however you could have contaminated meat in your system thanks to the wbc and the increasing of the computer role limit a fighter could have in his system. So there's holes in the system and fighters have been taking advantage of that for many years. Even when the worst case scenario come into play, if a fighter get busted, cheating is actually worth the risk because the suspension is not for that long. As Teddy Atlas pointed out, Big Baby Miller only got suspended for six months even though he took almost everything in the supplement book. That's the type of corruption that's going on in the world of boxing. And you could thank the WBC for adding on to that. As the WBC stand for the World Boxing Corruption Organization. And just to give y'all one example of many that the WBC been involved with, Jimenez, which is a female fighter that got busted for steroids about a week ago, both the A and B sample came out positive for steroids. However, the WBC is standing by her claiming that's their champion, even though the WBO already stripped her of the title. However, the WBC, they willing to ride and die for her, even when the ship sinks. When the ship is falling, they still willing to stay by her side, even when the world already saw what happened her cheating they still claiming her as the real champion they did the same thing with canelo alvarez leading up to the gennady golovkin rematch and they still doing it to this day that's why the wbc stand for the world boxing corruption organization so did tyson fury cheat i don't think so as far as taking steroids however it's possible if you ask me, I don't personally think he took anything versus Deontay Wilder. Absolutely not. However, in the past, he actually did. And they say, once a cheater, you will always be a cheater. I believe he adjusted to the environment and found different ways to cheat. Allegedly, that's what I believe. But as far as steroids, there's different ways you could play around the system 
as far as get in shape, take supplements off camp when they not testing you. So you could get the benefit of the supplements. By the time you be in camp, you in shape already. Many fighters do that. However, the point remains, there's ways you could play around the system. Me personally, I don't think Tyson Fury took any supplements for the Wilder rematch, but in the past he did, and that's a fact. And how ironic is it that ESPN made nearly five documentaries talking about Tyson Fury going through depression and beating it, coming back, shocking the world and defeating Deontay Wilder. However, they never mentioned the fact why he went through depression. What got him there is the million dollar question. See, that's the part that they ironically left out of the story. However, if you're going to tell a story, don't make it sound like a circuit. Tell the whole story. We want to know the whole truth. But let Tyson Fury tell it. He claimed he went through depression and got there because he reached the highest he ever dreamt of, which is being Klitschko. But if you're going to make a movie about depression, wouldn't you believe that sometimes it take a little more than just that to get you there? Like actually failing a drug test, which that's a fact. So that's what could have got him there. So because of that, after getting suspended for two years and he could no longer continue his dream, he got depressed and gained 150 pounds. Then Deontay Wilder called him out of retirement. But he was actually suspended. However, he got approved because of the wild boy. But it is what it is. Then came back and defeated all odds and knocked out Deontay Wilder. Without the glove gate situation. That sounds like a better story, don't it? There's a little more kick to it. There's sauce to it. There's a little flavor on it. Because it's actually the whole truth. So why not tell that part of the story too? And that sounds like a better story to me. Because at the end of the day, everyone deserves a second chance. However, when you flip the story and change the narrative, you take away the whole message behind this story and the positive message that you could receive. And then when the glove gay situation come up, you ignore that as well. Then there is really a narrative. See, Tyson Fury messed up the recipe because the story, regardless of him failing a drug test or not in the past, it still would have been a great story. And if I'm being honest, I think Aki should be getting paid the salary of the producer that have been producing Tyson Fury documentaries because I gave a better story off the dome regardless if ESPN want to filter it or not it still will be a better story than the story they told. However, Tyson Fury messed up the recipe because it would have been a great story regardless of what takes place. But he messed up the recipe by cheating again. And that's Deontay Wilder's favorite quote. Once a cheater, you will always be a cheater. So Tyson Fury messed up his story with his own hand. Now Deontay Wilder have the chance in the trilogy match since Tyson Fury got the complexion for the protection. That hope insurance covers all type of F-ups. So Wilder most likely will be seeing him again. However, this time around is going to be on an even playing field. So Deontay Wilder, that right hand, the hammer from Alabama, is his destiny. And he got the power to erase history and write his own story, regardless of the narrative out there, since Tyson Fury got the complexion for the protection. However, if you subscribe to Ahi TV, you get the whole truth unfiltered on Ahi Unbiased TV, where we tell you like it is with no emotion, just logic. And that's what new media is always pointing out, is the double standards in the sport. So moving on to the main point of this video. Teddy Atlas didn't give Tyson Fury the work like he usually give fighters the work. For example, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Even Pauli Malignaggi is guilty of that. 
Man, I remember the time Pauly went off on Manny Pacquiao. Man, he ethered him like he was Nas. And the whole reason behind that is because Pacquiao didn't want to take the Vada test back in 2009 to fight Floyd Money Mayweather for a 50-50 fight when both of the fighters was in their prime. Even Freddie Roach came out and claimed that it was their fault. The second time, he claimed it was 80% Bob Aaron fault. So with that being said, I don't see Pauli Malignaggi and Teddy Atlas keep the same energy with a guy that actually tested positive for steroids. It's one thing Pacquiao is allegedly cheating, taking supplements because he never got busted. However, Tyson Fury, his track record say he tested positive for steroids. But I don't hear Pauli Malignaggi keep the same energy with Tyson Fury, which with that alone, he lost a lot of credibility every time he speak on the subject and the glove situation. On the other hand, Teddy Atlas, he basically called out Tyson Fury for that. I don't know if it's the ESPN thing, but he worked for ESPN when Pacquiao fought on ESPN. And he still gave Pacquiao the same work, claiming he took a bite of that forbidden fruit. So why does Teddy Atlas have to deflect and bring up Pacquiao when, like I said, this is not about Pacquiao. This is Tyson Fury turn. Pacquiao already got the work, including Aki gave him the work. But everyone get their turn, and now it's Tyson Fury turn. So I don't see Teddy Atlas keep the same energy, period. I mean, he being too nice about it that I didn't even know if he's accusing Tyson Fury of cheating in the past or not. I had to watch the video twice in order to figure that out because I don't want to misjudge a person. But why is that? Why deflect and talk about Pacquiao? That's like me talking about Pacquiao and deflecting talking about Armstrong. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, Teddy Atlas is the same person that knew that Manny Pacquiao turned down a drug test during training camp with Vada when Mayweather wanted to fight him in 2009 and 2012. However, when he had Floyd Money Mayweather right in front of his face, as soon as the fight got made between him and Manny Pacquiao, he accused Mayweather for ducking Manny Pacquiao in his prime. I mean, the audacity of Teddy Atlas to know the fact because he was on ESPN calling out Manny Pacquiao for turning down a Vada test. He basically was co-signing Mayweather saying, if you clean, take the test. And then when he had Mayweather right in front of his face in 2015, he blames Mayweather for the fight happening five years too late. When he knew the fact that Manny Pacquiao was the one that turned down the fight in his prime due to a needle, even though he had tattoos. Teddy Atlas knew that information in and out so well, and I know that because he actually reported on it. Teddy Atlas went on ESPN and informed the public that during the negotiations between Mayweather and Pacquiao, a Pacquiao team member emailed TMT asking the question, if Pacquiao failed the drug test with Vada 14 days before the fight, can y'all excuse that or keep it under the hush hush till after the fight? Or at least not have any drug test 14 days before the fight? And Mayweather team said, absolutely not. If Pacquiao failed the drug test, the fight is off. And the Mayweather team let Pacquiao team know. The Vada testing will be going on till the fight itself, before and after the fight. So Teddy Atlas actually informed the public on this information. However, when he had Floyd Money Mayweather right in front of his face, Teddy had the audacity to blame the fight happening five years too late on Mayweather. And Floyd Mayweather responded to that by flipping it to a compliment, stating that things happen at the right time and the fight is bigger now but the point remains Teddy Atlas knew the truth however he rather hide the truth 
in order to tell a lie. And if that's not a form of having an agenda, then I don't know what is. And on the video, he said he don't have an agenda, but he clearly do. Because he knew the truth, but he chose to tell a lie. See, the difference between Aki and Teddy Atlas is actually Mayweather favorite quote. I'd rather be hated for telling the truth than be loved for telling a lie. So I'd rather tell you the truth, even if it makes you cry, than tell you a lie that's going to put a smile on your face. I'm just like that doctor. When you go to the doctor, you'd rather hear the truth, even if it hurt your feelings, than hear a lie that's going to help you sleep at night, right? So with that being stated, like I said, Teddy Atlas knew the truth, but he still chose to blame Floyd Mayweather any damn way. Teddy Atlas, also known for bashing Mayweather, claiming that the fight of the decade, Floyd Mayweather versus Pacquiao, was so boring, it hurt the sport, this and that. And that's what he's still claiming to this day. Even though, if y'all go back and watch the fight, every time Pacquiao threw a combination, the fans cheered. Every time Mayweather threw a punch, the fans was in awe. Look at that right hand by Mayweather. Y'all could go back and watch the fight. But let Teddy Atlas tell it. It hurt the sport. Even though he understand the art of boxing, which is the art of hit and don't get hit. And that's exactly what Mayweather displayed. But all of the sudden, it seemed like Teddy Atlas has an agenda. Like I said, he knew the truth that it was Pacquiao the reason why the fight happened five years too late because he didn't take the drug test, but he still blamed it on Mayweather any damn way. So you can't tell me you don't have an agenda when you clearly do, Teddy Atlas. So you got to work on that. Don't speak out of emotion. Speak logically because clever men such as new media could see right through that. We could see clearly right through that. And the same thing for Polly Melanagi. He went off on Manny Pacquiao. Keep in mind, Manny Pacquiao never failed a drug test like Tyson Fury did. However, you never hear Pauly bash Tyson Fury. Even though he allegedly cheated against Wilder with a tampered glove. However, even if you bring up the steroids, it's not an accusation because he actually failed in the past in 2015. And he bribed a 70-year-old man to lie in court. Use the most clever, dustiest excuse in the world, which is a wild boar. That excuse is wilder than wilder. And Pauli Malanaji don't say a damn thing about it. And Teddy Atlas is being all nice about it. So all I'm saying is keep the same energy. Don't flip. Consistency is key to success. However, Teddy Atlas and Pauli Malanaji even, when it's a fighter, on the coincidental list, they seem to bash him more so than a fighter on the hope list. And Fury, he got that hope insurance that covers all type of F-ups. That hope insurance is better than Geico. So with that being stated, like I said, I'm going to leave the link for the other video as far as the glove gate. And Teddy Atlas comment on that, which was a headshot. Make sure y'all watch it. Check it out if you want to know some shit about boxing. Word to my man, Roger. May he rest in peace, inshallah. And this is about Tyson Fury, not Pacquiao. But if any one of y'all want to dispute what I said, y'all could check out the links in the comment section below, which will include Freddie Roach admitting it was their fault. It was Pacquiao's fault. And then the second time, it was Bob Aaron's fault, according to Freddie himself. So like I always say... Subscribe below if you're trying to get smarter by the minute. If you're trying to get dumber by the second, don't. And listen to these decafs, aka dumb casual ass fans slash old media. Of course, shout out to DBN for being the entrepreneur of new media that I'm a part of. And if you're a casual fan and you want to be a hardcore, all you have to do is attend the IQ University every Sunday live on Split Decision. It's a boxing debate slash talk show, the hottest boxing show on social media, on TV, period. Exclusively on Achi TV. 
So if you want to graduate from the IQ University and become a hardcore boxing fan, all you have to do is click on the notification bell to get notified every time we post to go live. It's free 99, no tuition. Where our key is pound for pound number one when it comes to debate the past, present, and future. So come see me, call in, tune in, follow my man Lunatune for the funniest boxing memes. If a picture says a thousand words, his picture says a million words. Follow me too at Aki TV. And of course, this is the Boxing Brotherhood. Aki stands for my brother. And to be continued on the next episode of Aki, Aki, Aki TV. Peace and we at you.